the press corps. This afternoon, we are here to give you an update on Tropical Storm Jerry following a meeting this morning of the Emergency Measures Organization. Let me start with the good news. Tropic Tropical Storm Jerry's winds are weakening, and we anticipate the winds will continue to weaken. Joining me today are Mr. James Dodgson. He's the director of the Bermuda Weather Service, who will discuss the details of the storm. Ms. Shelley Lehman from Balco. She's also here to provide an update, and she will give a brief overview. And Ms. Kelly Trott of the Durham. Let's start with our update. Tomorrow, Wednesday, September 25th, Bermuda will open for business as normal. Schools will be open. Government offices will be open, and the causeway will be open. Out of an, abortion, out of an abundance of caution, we will, play very, uh, we will play very close attention to the road conditions. The Bermuda Regiment remains embodied. There will be crews out overnight and during the day tomorrow. They will assess the road conditions, and they will, they will clear the road of debris as and when needed. Starting at 10 p.m. tonight, we will keep the public updated on our emergency broadcast station at 100.1 FM. We will provide an update constantly to local media. On Wednesday morning, we will also provide updates to the local radio stations. Let me repeat, tomorrow all public schools will be open. All buses will be running. All government offices will be open. The causeway will remain open. The ferry service will be suspended tomorrow. We anticipate that there will continue to be debris clearing, especially as the wind, winds pick up. I urge everyone to use caution as they are driving and riding on the roads. If you don't have to ride your bike tomorrow, we urge you not to ride your bike tomorrow. Tomorrow, trash collection will be as normal. All beaches remain closed to all water activity until Thursday. The emergency shelter at Cedar Bridge Academy will open today at 5 p.m. and will remain open throughout Wednesday. We encourage everyone who feels unsafe in their home due to damage from Hurricane Alberto and people who live on boats to go to the shelter located at the Cedar Bridge Academy. The Aleph International Wade Airport will open today and tomorrow as normal. Check with your airlines directly for any flight details. As we said yesterday, we recognize that this time can be a stressful time for all and that many people are experiencing anxiety. We urge everyone to pay clear, close attention to their stress levels and to the stress levels of their loved ones. If you are experiencing any mental health or emotional challenges due to the recent storms, please call 236-8253, 236-8253 from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Monday to Friday and speak to the Red Cross psychologist or one of their psychological first aiders. Also between 9 p.m. and 9 a.m. Monday to Friday and any time of Saturday, you can call the Maui Main Line at 236-3770, 236-3770 and ask for their resource person. Anyone experiencing a mental health crisis should also call 911 at any time. Please stay tuned to the emergency broadcast station from 10 p.m. tonight from any updates. If you know anyone who does not have access to online media sites, specifically our seniors, please encourage them to listen to 100.1 FM today at 1.30 as we will go live for an update and again tonight at 10 p.m. for a further update. Thank you. Good afternoon. So I'll provide everyone an update on Tropical Storm Jerry. As the Minister said, it is a weakening tropical storm, but we are still expecting tropical storm force winds 
The winds are already starting to increase. We're seeing showers associated with Jerry moving into Bermuda and those tropical storm force winds are expected to reach the island sometime around the middle of tonight and continue through much of tomorrow. Over exposed elevated parts of the island we could see gusts to storm force but we're now not expecting hurricane force gusts across any parts of the island. The system is expected to move by to its closest approach uh, middle of tomorrow afternoon around 50 nautical miles to the northwest of the island not dissimilar to Humberto's passage uh, a week or so ago. With the system moving in we are continuing to see the swells and rough surf along the south shore especially so that is uh, certainly dangerous um, but uh, the main concern obviously uh, is, is the winds and uh, the rain and uh, the minister has already spoken about the hazards associated with that. As the system moves through tomorrow afternoon we will see conditions improving, uh, the wind starting to ease off into the evening and then by Thursday we're looking at much better weather developing across the island and that should continue into the weekend. Thank you. Good afternoon and thank you Minister and thank you members of the media. Belco continues to make good progress in restoring power to its customers. Work continues on main branch lines and crews are working on smaller pockets of outages in neighbourhoods in all parishes. However, overgrown vegetation that was broken, uprooted and hitting power lines during the storm is making the restoration process much more time consuming than expected. It can take a few hours or more to reconnect small pockets of customers. In some cases, customers who have had their power restored will have it switched off for a short period so that other lines can be safely repaired. While our crews are making good progress, they are also facing setbacks. Last night, there were a number of dangerous pole fires. When salt that had been deposited by Humberto combined with the light rain, the mixture became conductive, leading to the pole fires. These fires knocked out power to a number of areas that had previously been restored. Dealing with these priority emergencies has slowed progress on planned restorations. Thankfully, with the assistance of our retirees, as well as extra linesmen from Algonquin Power and Utilities, we have 75% more linesmen working to restore electricity to our remaining customers without power. With the approach of Tropical Storm Jerry, Belco staff are replenishing supplies and equipment in staging areas across the island to prepare for any further damage to the grid. Belco crews will continue to work between 8 a.m. and midnight across the island to restore power. As Tropical Storm Jerry approaches, Belco crews will work until the weather makes it unsafe to continue. Crews will be back out as soon as the storm has passed and it is safe to continue working. Belco would once again like to thank all those who have been instrumental in getting the work done efficiently and safely and ask for the public's patience as work continues. Residents can visit the Belco website at www.belco.bm for up-to-date information. Thank you. Good day, Bermuda. The hospital is still reporting persons that are coming in with injuries related to homes, home repair and business repair. Please be careful and wear the proper safety equipment. And again, do not attempt any repairs that are beyond your physical or technical ability. Roofing issues and assistance for vulnerable persons, please call 525-FIRE which is 525-3473. This is for persons that need assistance in getting their roofs tarped prior to Jerry. Again, if residents can clear debris as much as possible to allow Balco trucks to access the areas and clear storm drains, it is anticipated that Jerry will bring some rainfall, which has already started, so clear drains to avoid or mitigate flooding. Please be extra vigilant when moving about our roads as road conditions will be less than favorable. Jerry will bring one to three inches of rain and will bring down loose and dead leaves. This combined with wet roads will leave the roads very slippery. Tune in to 100.1, the emergency broadcast station, which will be on air throughout tonight into tomorrow to give updates. 
Thank you very much. Any questions from the media? Yes, good afternoon. Um, Minister, I'm wondering, have you had any indication on the availability of slate? I'm hearing it's a rare commodity and hard to come by. It, we have had no indication. Obviously, that is a private enterprise. The government has its, uh, the government has a, a amount of slate for government buildings. That is a question. We believe that it's for the private sector. Sorry, Mr. A little off topic, but uh, we have had some questions from folks wondering if there's still uh, Bahamas relief on the island, um, if there is any, and, and if we have a plan for when that's going to go, or if it's too early to say yet. It's my understanding from the government's participation in the, in the Bahamas relief that the, as you know, there was an, an effort just over two weeks two weeks ago. There, the first 100 tons of goods, they traveled by the HMS protector, and that. Those goods are now in the Bahamas. They have been distributed. There was a second tranche of goods that uh, were collected, and they were at the stored at the Hamilton Seventy Event Center. That was all packaged, um, and it was sent to a staging area. A number of our local shippers, uh, at their personal expense, packaged it and shipped it uh, overseas. A number of it. A number of it is waiting my understanding, to go on its last leg abroad. We do need some assistance in covering the costs. We have about $15,000 in cost. Now we're talking about just over, if we were to quantify the goods that were raised, 1.5 to $1.7 million worth of goods. So first of all, you'd like to thank the people of Bermuda for giving. We saw videos and we have seen uh, uh, pictures of the people in Bahamas receiving those goods. We just need some good benefactors uh, to help us to underwrite the cost for the last bit of these goods going overseas um, to help defray the shipping cost. And we need support in getting $15,000 worth of these costs defrayed. That's, uh, that's one five, not five, sir. One five, sir. Thank you, sir. Any other questions? Yeah, I just have one more um, for the... Falco representative. Um, it's been an ongoing issue and it comes up every time. There's been a lot of talk as to why wires are not totally underground. I know some areas are underground, but can you just update the public as to where Valco is with all of that? Certainly. Um, our transmission system is completely underground, so that's um, coming from our plant all the way out to our substations. In terms of Looking at our distribution network, it becomes a little bit more costly, and certainly you start getting into neighborhoods and where customers, we, have to, we would have to approach them about the, the cost burden associated with that. But it's something that's always looked at, and, and cost is the main factor. Thank you. If there are no more questions, thanks to you very much, ladies and gentlemen.